Hey watercolor wizards, Hajra here. Today I'll be testing my new Schmincke pearlescent paints by using them to add color to butterflies I did in Payne's Grey Grisaille in another video. If you want to do the two full butterflies that I'm doing, my ink drawings and photo references are available for my patrons on Patreon, at that affordable single tier with all my patron rewards. It's always especially magical to add color to a piece that's just been in black and white in earlier stages. I started with the Comet Moth's wing first, and that first pop of yellow was just so much fun. The Schmincke Pearl colors have a cooler yellow, which I put in first, and then later I came back with a warmer yellow, as well as a yellow ochre pearl to get some temperature contrast. I also added the brown pearl to get the darkest spots and dashes on the wing pattern. The colors went down pretty bright, and then dulled down a bit as the yellow and brown pigments sunk into the paper, but the shimmery white mica stayed on top of the paper. Unlike regular watercolor, where you can reapply more paint to get a brighter and darker effect. These pearl colors actually fade more the more layers of them are applied. It's a pretty look, a lovely vintage keepsake look, but one you should be prepared for in case that's not what you want. If you want gloriously bold and vibrant colors, then don't use these pearl colors. Just use conventional watercolor gouache or liquiding colors, all those will be far more vibrant without the mica in them. So why does the faded vintage look happen and actually increase with these colors? Well, as I mentioned before, the white shimmer mica ingredient sits on top of the paper in larger particles while the colored pigment ingredient stains and sinks into the paper. The topmost mica flakes then act as an occlusive agent blocking the eye from seeing the colored pigment beneath. Now, if you buy a mica paint where the mica is processed to be rolled and coated by the pigment and not just tossed in and intermixed, this won't be an issue. With coated mica, you would have an opaque gouache type paint like our colored metallic paints, the gold, silvers, coppers, rose gold, and other opaque tinted metallics made by Finitech and also the six metallics now made by Schmincke. Those opaque metallics are different from these transparent watercolor pigment pearlescent paints with white mica shimmer just mixed in. And if you want a shimmery pearl look over watercolor but you want it to be brighter and not vintage looking, you're actually better off just painting with your regular watercolors and then going over the top with shimmer medium like aqua shine as I showed with fairy wings in a past video. So do I regret buying these? Just a little bit, only because the separate shimmer medium makes them redundant as colored paints, but on the other hand, I'm still very glad I got the six metallics in golds and silvers since they are actually colored, bonded, mica, and metallic opaque paints. Schmincke is still my favorite watercolor brand, but I'm not ever going to be the biggest pearlescent watercolor paint fan regardless of who makes it. So to make the most vibrant use of these Schmincke Pearl paints that I do have, I wouldn't use them in many layers. This is why I did the Grisaille underneath, because it's a good idea to eliminate value layers via conventional paint. Add more layers and the shimmer just starts to build up on the surface, block the sunken pigment beneath it, and the end result will just get duller pigment-wise. The Schmincke Pearl paints reworked and blended very well. They didn't leave hard edges that couldn't be softened. That was a nice perk because with the paint's gray underlayer from the previous video, for example, I had to race against the water drying on the paper and the pigment getting someplace I didn't want and a shape I didn't want because it's so hard to fix a staining transparent watercolor. But these pearl paints could be softened at the edges even as they dried out, so I didn't feel under any time pressure to blend them out just so.
All the species I've painted here, whether in full form or just in partial wing sections, are some of the most sought after butterflies by collectors, which unfortunately makes them endangered. I was lucky to be able to see them on display at the California Academy of Sciences. All of them are just super striking. The sunset moth, which has a wing top center here, is found only in Madagascar. The iridescent parts of the wings don't actually have color. They look the way they do due to optical interference. And interesting but strange, the silk from the caterpillars of the sunset moth causes a euphoric high if consumed, and the caterpillar and grown moth itself are toxic from the species Omphalia. Native Malagasy people call the sunset moth Adrian Dolo, or Lolon Andriana, which means noble spirit or king spirit. Because of its bright colors, which signal toxicity, its day flying habits, and its vertical wing night resting position, the sunset moth is often mistaken for a butterfly. The comet moth, of which I show a yellowing portion near the bottom center, is another showy Madagascan moth and also endangered in the wild. It's one of the world's largest silk moths, as the male has a tail span of 20 centimeters. Because it's from a rainforest, the cocoons of its caterpillars have many holes in them to keep the pupa from drowning in the daily rains. The adult moth, like certain moth species, can't even feed and only lives for four to five days. I did go and darken the darkest areas further with the black pearl paint and it was a nice way to darken a bit more and to have a unified pearly shimmer over the whole surface rather than leave just the earlier gray paint in big areas with no shimmer. When these butterflies were all done, at certain angles they had a lovely iridescent pearly shimmer from that mica on the surface. It was an appropriate choice for butterflies with shimmery wings, it fits right in with this subject. So unexpected bonus round, I tried this again really fast with an ink and wash piece, a leftover Disney Peter Pan mermaid study from my watercolor pencils video was just hanging around so I thought it was perfect to just try the new paints on a simpler subject with no grisaille underneath and see how and if that changed the color vibrancy and shimmer effect. I used a dark brown zig writer to ink in some fine lines first. I had my drawing board angled up in such a way that the inking went slower than I would do normally, but luckily this was a simple drawing. Like you've seen me do in the past, I scribbled with the thicker side of my brown marker on my palette area, added a drop of water, and used a spotter brush to get the skin and face lines. A 20 over 0 spotter will give you even thinner lines than the fine tip of a super fine marker. And this mermaid study, along with another one, are also available as ink sketches with the references on Patreon. Then I got right in with the painting, and again the colors are lovely and bright in a single glaze and the edges are easy to soften and blend even on this reduced sizing BFK Reads paper, so they are a lot of fun to use. Using them even more diluted, like I did in places with the mermaid skin or the rocky shoreline, makes them even more transparent and conventional in appearance. In 
this mermaid piece, the lagoon water background was where the paint got the thickest and it was less appealing to me in how it looked than the transparent skin or rock shoreline or mid-density hair and tail. So it underscored that to me, my favorite look with these paints is thin to mid-density. And if I want opaque metallic accents or backgrounds, and I'll use the opaque gold and silver metallics from Schmincke or the metallics and opal colors from Finitec. You can also mix colored paints into silver paint or colored inks into silver ink to create pearly metallic tints. I actually have silver ink and also silver watercolor and I'll experiment in the future to see what happens if I mix those into colored inks or watercolors. After playing with them on this mermaid study, I really think they're a good set for holiday card ink and wash pieces because they have that lovely shimmer and also any background that might need shimmer. That same lovely shimmer makes them tricky to scan or film or photograph well. I'm going to keep utilizing them in thinner glazes in the future, which is how I think they look best. Thinner and fewer layers will keep the pigment to mica ratio in favor of the pigment with just the right touch of shimmery sparkle. And once these pearlescent pans are gone, I'll just use my Aqua Shine pearlescent medium over regular watercolors because it gives me the same effect with less hassle and expense. Wizards, I had a lot of fun using these paints for the first time. Hope you found this useful in assessing if you want to use Schmincke pearlescent watercolors yourself. Please like, comment, subscribe, and check out my website links and Patreon page to support my art and art channel below. Thanks for parking your brushes here and wishing you sparkly watercolor adventures. <laughs>